Hey, what's up guys? My name's Faison. Welcome to Unfazed. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the different types of boom levers that you could build for your next competition. Before we get into the video, please be sure to hit the like button, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for new Science Olympiad videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But with that said, let's get right into it. Alright guys, so before I get into the bulk of the content for today, I just want to bring to light some of the changes that were made in the 2021 rules for Science Olympiad Boom Lever. The first of which being that... Uh, it's regarding the assembly block. So now, instead of being able to, uh, I guess, reorient the parts of the loading block, you now have to have it the way it was there originally, which doesn't really affect you that much. It's really just for making sure teams aren't abusing the loading block and are able to make the entire competition more fair. So I 100% agree with this rule change. The other notable rule change is regarding this weird rule where now your boom lever can apparently not thrust back against the testing apparatus while it's loading, which is completely unfeasible if you think about it because if you draw a free body diagram with your boom lever, it is at some point going to thrust back against the wall of the testing apparatus in order to stay still. So this rule makes completely no sense whatsoever, but the only way to interpret it, um, I guess the way Science Olympiad wanted it to be interpreted, was mainly talking about the, um, the attachment hook itself. So not letting your attachment hook push back against the testing apparatus, which I don't see how that benefits you at all. So I don't think this is really going to hurt you or help you in any way is just some dumb rule that Science Olympiad put in thinking they that it would make the rules more complicated I guess. I just don't really see the point of this rule and you shouldn't really focus too much on it. Also one other quick thing, thank you to Zach Z for suggesting I make a video on Boom Lever and how the new rules will affect the way that you should design your Boom Lever. So like I was talking about earlier, the only two main changes in the rules for the 2021 season are regarding the way that you actually assemble the loading block and some weird rule regarding the attachment hook thrusting back against the testing apparatus. And if you've been designing a boom lever normally, then neither of those two rules should hinder the way you build your boom lever. And obviously there are a ton of ways that you can build your boom lever, but the main one that I want to focus on here today are first standard boom lever types, and then we'll move on to talk a little bit about box beam boom levers. So this is what a standard boom lever, quote unquote standard, looks like. If you've looked up anything about this event, or even if you're just watching this video, you probably know what a boom lever looks like, but I just want to go over the main points of why this boom lever is considered standard and how other types of boom levers improve upon it. Now the main thing I want to focus on is the base of the boom lever. Now notice at uh, for this boom lever the base is made of two sticks and then a bunch of other trusses placed on that base in order to allow it to hold a greater amount of weight. And while yes, this is really good and a great way to go about building your boom lever, it is not necessarily the best. In fact, if you want to learn more about how boom lever or how physics goes into building your boom lever, you can watch this video I made about the physics of a boom lever. I'll tag that up here or you can find it in the description. But basically what I'm trying to say is that Although it is a good way to go out building your boom lever, it's not necessarily the best. And the reason is, is because of buckling strength. So buckling strength, again, if you haven't watched that video, please check it out. It'll make this video a little bit more clear. But buckling strength is the ability of a member to resist compression force or bending. So when you're using 
only two sticks and they're relatively small, the buckling strength of those pieces are much weaker than you really want them to be, which in turn make your boom lever a little bit weaker than it needs to be in order to get that full 15 kilogram. So that's one of the biggest flaws with the standard boom lever design. And in just a moment, I'm about to go over how box beam or tower chimney boom levers and and other types of designs could improve upon the buckling strength of your members. Alright, so I'm sorry about this image, it's pretty blurry, but this is an image of a 2020 size Olympiad boom lever that does meet the requirements of this year's rules, so I really would have you pay attention to this picture because this is something that you could really implement. And I'm currently working on getting a jig running and able to give to you guys so that you can easily make these tower chimney boom levers. But besides that, let's quickly discuss why tower chimney boom levers might be a superior option compared to standard boom levers. And this all ties back to the concept of buckling strength. And buckling strength is improved when the thickness of a piece of wood is increased. So rather than, if you look at the boom lever shown here, rather than having just two sticks as the base, it instead has four sticks, and two sticks per side. So when you have two sticks per side, the actual width or thickness of the of the each base piece of your boom lever is actually the distance between those two pieces. So if you look back to the standard boom lever, it's roughly about an eighth to a fourth of an inch thick. But for this box or tower chimney boom lever, because they the two um, the two base pieces on each side are spaced out, let's just say two centimeters apart, or two or say let's say an inch to make it a little simpler. So rather than one eighth of an inch or one fourth of an inch compared to the standard boom lever, the tower chimney boom lever has a thickness of one inch because the two pieces are spaced one inch apart. And that just improves the buckling strength of your boom lever significantly. And because it does, your boom lever is much stronger. Now notice that this is that this uh, these pieces are reinforced with a bunch of trusses. And even though you have to put so many trusses on these box or tower chimney boom levers to make them stronger, it's a lot easier or a lot more efficient to do it this way because if you cut a one inch piece of balsa wood to use as your base, you have all of the all of those gaps that are on this tower chimney boom lever, they're all filled in, so you end up with a heavier boom lever overall, which may make the tower chimney boom lever a lot more viable than you may have originally thought. So if you haven't already considered using a tower chimney boom lever compared to a standard, I would highly recommend you at least try to experiment with it. I know I had a bunch of difficulty trying to make a successful tower chimney boom lever, but again, I will be trying to build a jig and then um, try to make get some way to give that to you guys uh, to help you build uh, these tower chimney boom levers a little bit easier. But if this video helped you at all, or even if it didn't help you at all, please let me know in the comments so I can learn to improve the way I explain things. But yeah, just... I just wanted to show you guys some of the differences between standard and tower chimney, how they relate to the new rules, and um, just why you might want to consider using tower chimneys compared to standards. But again, thank you for listening, and make sure you, uh, you let me know if you learned something from my video in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I post videos on Science Olympiad every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you're interested in any of that, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be updated every single time I post a new video. But with that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay unfazed.